What's going on everybody? I figured I should give you all an update on the future of the Scotian Canadian channel or I guess uh, lack thereof because unfortunately all this stuff is coming down. The Scotian Canadian studio will be no more and I'll get into the reasons why here shortly but first guys I started this thing four years ago which is crazy to think about. In this very room I uh, you know I came in with a lot of with a lot of energy a lot of fire, a lot of passion, and a lot of awkwardness. I had to take quite a bit of time to get used to being in front of a camera by myself in this room. Uh, you know, what felt like talking to myself, but what I quickly realized, I was talking to a lot of, a lot of great people. Um, but the reason why I started it back then was because I was frankly sick and tired of the way the mainstream media was covering the Montreal Canadiens as well as the other teams in Canada, but but I'm a Habs fan, so I was just, it was constant, it's what it seemed like anti-Habs, or everything they were doing was wrong, and it wasn't going to pan out, and what an embarrassing franchise, and I was just sick and tired of it, and I had a feeling that there was many more Habs fans, just like me, that wanted some thoughtful content, some content that was objective as possible, because not only was I tired of the negativity, I thought the takes coming from some of these experts, some of these people that, you know, were responsible for providing Habs fans with proper content, uh, they are awful. And I felt like Montreal was building towards something and I wanted to share that with Habs fans. And you know what? Four years later, I think I found... All those Habs fans, I had a feeling were out there, and that's you guys. And I seriously cannot thank you enough for the support over the over the years. Clicking on my videos, it just I I still um, it's surreal to think that people want to hear what I have to say. Before I started the channel, I was a very shy person. Still am to a, a degree, you know, a bit socially awkward. Not much of a presence on social media which I think is a good thing, even now. A big reason why I'm in the social media game is to promote my channel, so I might also take a little step back from that too, to be honest. But, um, yeah, I, I just, I can't thank you guys enough. Because of you guys, I have been able to experience so many cool things and meet so many cool people through this passion project. And... Quite frankly, it was a dream come true. And, and not only that, but to get to experience the ups and downs of the last four years of the Montreal Canadiens with all of you has been a treat. I mean, we have suffered through some awful seasons together, including this last one, but also, you know, some, some exciting seasons that ended in heartbreak, you know, where we just missed the playoffs that year Max Domi went off. We got to see some big trades. We got to see Suzuki acquired by the team. We got to, you know, hash out the, the Weber deal, which a lot of the experts hated. We got to, you know, somehow make it into the play-in round and then beat the Pittsburgh Penguins, Crosby and the Penguins. Then we got to go on an epic, historic cup final run. Of course, it ended in heartbreak, but I will cherish that forever. Knocking out the Leafs was an absolute treat. And I'm telling you, it may seem like a, you know, it's a bit of a cheerleader, but of, you know, and, you know, you may like to assume or some may like to assume that I just agreed with everything the Habs were doing because I was a Habs fan or I said the Habs could win just because I'm a Habs fan. And yeah, of course, a Habs fan will say that. But I'm telling you right now, there is a there was a lot, a lot of prep time and research time that went into every single video that I did. And I, I take my prediction seriously. I don't want to be wrong. I don't like being wrong. I have no problem admitting when I'm wrong. But my goal is always to be correct and provide my viewers with accurate content that, and accurate takes that I believe in. And I felt like I've done that over the years. I, 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 I'm, I'm proud of that. I've, I've definitely been way off base on some things, but... I, I believed in this team, and they almost reached the pinnacle, and it, it was a treat to to go through that with all of you. And that leads me into saying that I unfortunately just don't have the time anymore 
to do that prep work, to do that research. I could stand in this, uh, stand in front of this camera and talk all day, but I'd probably start to sound repetitive or my takes would be pretty off base. And I'm just, I don't want to fake it for you guys. I just, I really don't. So not only have we kind of outgrown our home and we need some more space for, you know, me and my wife and of course the kids as well. You know, there's other aspects to it too. So the stuff's coming down and I, I just, I've run out of time. Now, maybe someday I will be able to create a little, you know, space where I can make some content and, you know, find some time to, to do that proper research. But for the time being, got to take a little step back. But again, I just, I have to thank y'all because, you know, the people who came to say thanks for the content, shout out to, uh, Jeff Head, who is a part of Talking Habs, who recently passed away and left uh, a young daughter behind and wife. Uh, I don't want to get too into it, but a few years ago, he sent me a really touching message and then we kept in touch over the years. Um, Hard to process that he's not with us anymore. A wonderful, wonderful person. Passionate Habs fan. So shout out to him. One example of many, many great people that I've met. So the people that have come to say thank you, the people that have come to criticize my takes, the people who have come to debate my takes, the people who have come to ridicule me. I thank you all. Anyone who's played a part in this YouTube channel, I owe you gratitude because you've made me a better person. You've increased my knowledge of the game of hockey and I'm just grateful for it. I really am. And you know, I got to get on national TV. I got to be on a side panel with Steve Dangle that was broadcast nationally right before game seven. I'll cherish that for the rest of my life. The fact that I can show that to my children just is uh, incredible. Absolutely incredible. And yeah, it's just, it's been an absolute treasure doing this thing. And I'd like to say that anybody considering doing this, do it. Whether it's for the Habs, for, you know, another NHL team, a baseball team, football team, whatever. Collect some memorabilia. Hang it up. Get a ring light. Get a microphone. Use your camera to film if you have to. That's what I've been using and it's done the trick for me. You can do it. And I'm an example of what can, what can come out of it. Great experiences, meeting amazing people. So I, I seriously encourage you to do it. And I also encourage you to check out all the different fan-made content, especially, you know, my niche is the Montreal Canadiens. And there are so many hard workers that are independent. And as much as we're passionate about it, as much as it's fun, it is a lot of work. So, you know, shout out to the guys from, from, from Failing Hands, who this first podcast I was ever on, I... Got to follow up Eric Engels a week later. Like the fact I was on a podcast that Eric Engels was on the Eric Engels was on the week prior just like blew my mind back then. So to John, Mike, and Mo, I cannot thank you guys enough for the words of encouragement over the years. Then of course there is the guys from Habs Unfiltered, uh, Treg, as well as Blaine and Matt. I mean these guys are, are studs as well, making fantastic content, very consistent, very knowledgeable, and great people. And of course, the boys from Obalotage who are always, you know, up for a good laugh. I love chatting with those fellas, Pat, Matt, and Jeff. Absolute studs. They're killing it on the French side of things. And of course, our sidekick, Andrew, who has become a really good friend of mine. Then there's Tyler Coleman, you know, my buddy, the Leafs fan, who will jump, jump in here every now and then. I know some of you don't like him, but he's a great guy. He knows his stuff. And uh, it's just about the love of the game, right? And then, of course, there's, there's all the others, like Happy Hour. Veronica, Beth, and Dave, great people, chatted with them a few different times, Salt of the Earth, the Habs Forum, uh, No Respect Podcast, those guys are hilarious and they put out some great content as well. Please guys, support your independent creators and the fan-made creators because I've been telling you, like the knowledge, the, the, the professionalism, the quality of the content, it's all there waiting for you to eat up. So check it all out and... Before I leave you, there is one more thing. 
that I have to get off my chest. I don't think there's many willing to say it in this industry, in this climate right now, but we're going to get serious. And please do not take this personally. I, I'm not trying to make judgments upon anyone. However, something needs to be said. I think it's absolutely disgusting and quite frankly abhorrent the level at which gambling and sports betting is being now advertised and promoted and glorified in Canada and especially in our game of hockey now. You know, it's a tidal wave that un unfortunately is probably not going to stop, but I do think it's absolutely disgusting, especially in terms of the national broadcasters, the big broadcasters. You know, it just seems everywhere you look now, all the big podcasts, all the you know, before playoff games, it's just this sports betting company or this sports book or get free money to sign up and do this and blah, blah, blah. And I can tell you guys, I have been approached a handful of times to advertise this stuff. And I've said no every single time. And don't get me wrong. My conscience is not clear. When I got out of college, I worked at a marketing agency and I was put into a position where I had to do ad campaigns, billboards, posters, brands for a few different casinos. And for the first while, I, it didn't register with me. But then after a while, it did. Because I have felt the pain. I felt the pain of what gambling can do to a child, to a family, to people's financial security. And it's hard. It sucks. It really sucks. So then for myself to go on and do it myself and promote it and hear these casino executives go on about how they want, they need more young people and this and this. It's just gross. And it led me to leaving marketing completely. I just, I couldn't do it. Um, and that's also what kind of led me to doing this. I had to use my skills in some sort of way. And I just want you guys to know that this comes from a place of sacrifice. You know, I could have taken those opportunities to, you know, promote sports betting companies on my channel. There's been a few different jobs that have popped up. I could have applied for, but of course it's sports betting companies. And I just, I cannot live with that on my conscience. So I do think that some of these broadcast executives, some of these, some of these companies who are running big podcasts should be ashamed. And to the little guys like myself who may consider advertising this stuff, just be conscious of what your actions can lead to. You may not get to feel the consequences of what you're promoting, but me personally, I would never want to find out that someone took my advice teenager took my advice and now he's addicted to to gambling or a, a father of two took my advice and went you know what I'm going to sign up for that and then he's hooked these companies these these gambling companies and sports books and all that they're not set up to make you money they're set up to make money and there is a ton of money in it and and don't get me wrong I'm not I, I'm not completely against gambling if you if it's if if it gives you a bit of joy, if you like to throw a few bucks down on a game to, you know, have some excitement or, you know, I come from, you know, not having money. Uh, I come from a, you know, hard upbringing and I don't know what it's like to have just extra money lying around. But so you got to understand my issue isn't with the people who like to, to partake. My issue is with the glorification and the promotion of it that's going on in mediums that are consumed by children, by young people, by people who may have addictive personalities. So just be aware of what you're doing. Is, you know, a couple cents for every sign up you get on this betting site really worth it? Is it? It sucks. Every time I, I turn on a playoff game now, it it's immediately kind of dampers the mood because this is being thrown in my face. It brings back 
tough memories, you know? So that's all I got to say, guys. I, I just think it's, um, I just wish we could go back to the days where we weren't throwing this in the faces of, you know, the masses. And I understand that the Montreal Canadiens are owned by a beer company. I'm sure I'll get that critique here. But again, I felt the pain of that as well, you know? And I can tell you firsthand that, at least in my experience, gambling addictions can have much more severe outcomes that make much more long-lasting damage on the people around uh, those actions. Anyway, enough about that, guys. I think I made my point. Thank you, everybody, for supporting me over the years. You don't know how much I truly appreciate all of you. Sincerely, hopefully I'll see you soon again one of these days. Just down the road is where I'll always be. And one last time, <laughs> at least for now, go Habs, go baby! Woo! To my wife, Jenna, <laughs> thank you for putting up with this over the years. Uh, all those late nights of me selling, crying, talking nonstop. <laughs> Thanks for putting up with it. Thanks for uh, supporting me the whole way. To my three beautiful kids, Amelia, Mason, and Cole. It blows my mind how fast you're growing. I love you so much. You make me proud every day. And I'm more than happy to make the sacrifice for our family to give us some more space. Um, I actually can't wait for it, to, to be honest. So, I love you all so much. And thank you to Carrie Price, it has to be said, for being a role model of a, of a human, of a father, in more ways than one. I can't express how much I look up to, to that man. And thank you to Jeff Molson, seriously, for continuing to operate the Canadians and fill the management and executive roles with people of all class. I think it reflects strongly on the organization, and I truly believe it's why we've had the most success out of any Canadian team over the years and he's done it again with Jeff Gordon and Kent Hughes, Marty St. Louis. So thank you for that. I love this team. I'll always love this team and I cannot wait for the future. They're going to be good. <laughs>